Hey guys, Zen here, and today we're getting into the latest news for Rainbow Six Siege and Year 5. Guys, there are a lot of new viewers here watching the content, and so if you are new, remember to click the subscribe button, and also turn on all notifications so we can hear from you early. With that, guys, thank you for joining me. Let's get into this. Now before we jump into the really exciting stuff, I wanted to talk about something that affects us all, and anyone who plans on playing Rainbow Six Siege, and that's the new Vulcan Graphics API. Even before the big Year 5 reveals and everything else that's inbound for Siege, this is probably the most important important because it's essentially the new platform that the game will be running on. Now, I've been getting a lot of questions about this, and so guys, let's get a bit nerdy. So for starters, what Vulcan is looking to accomplish is to make the game more accessible on more hardware. The current DirectX 11 is getting a bit old, and as the game progresses and adds more content, it's becoming challenging to keep operating on that system, and so Ubisoft and the devs have decided to go with Vulcan. Why Vulcan? Well, for Siege specifically, Vulcan offered up the best utilization of both the CPU and the GPU, so ultimately, it comes down to performance, but if you're asking me directly, I think it has a lot more to do with the new consoles, both the Xbox Series X and the PS5, and future-proofing the game for those machines. DirectX 11 is dated, and so you can assume most games will be created on DX12, or of course Vulkan, and so to add longevity and make it available for the new consoles, I think this is one of the lead reasons for the change. The last thing to mention is that Vulkan is quite literally the Android for graphics APIs, and one of its key features is to make porting games on it more streamlined and easier to do. And so given the fact Ubisoft has confirmed Siege will be essentially moving up to the next generation of consoles, Vulcan is the perfect fit for that. So yeah, it's still in testing and I'm assuming it'll be introduced in full in year five. Now, speaking of year five, I'm ready to dive deep into everything that's come out recently and some of the leaks circling around the community. And I've got a bunch of thoughts. So let's do that. So the first thing is this, it was posted on the Rainbow Six Siege Instagram page and it's an image of a bank card and a phone app from Prestige National Bank, which is of course the bank in Rainbow Six Siege and the map we all know and have experienced. Written on the app is Castle UTP1, which is the name of his armor panel gadget, and at the bottom it says securing your data nearly half the time. Now, the bank card uses Castle's name, Miles Campbell, and an expiration date of 920 or September of 2020 this year. Now, just to sum up the whole post, this must be a tease for both a bank and castle rework, and to expect it on or around year five season three in September. Nearly half the time is the only thing that trips me up because it could mean the attackers are successful nearly half the time and the devs are looking to change that or possibly Castle is picked nearly half the time on that map and needs a change so that he's more reliable. Like again, it is cryptic, but I think what's pretty obvious about this is that Castle and an update to Bank should be expected for year five at some point in September. I'm gonna take this opportunity to say that I genuinely believe Castle Barricades should not be able to be meleeed down. You should have to force the breach to get past them, and I really think that's all it would take to bring him up to speed with the meta. Castle is a vanilla op, and back then there wasn't Zofia, Kali, or even Habana to help take the armor panels down. You only really had Ash and Sledge as far as unique abilities to deal with Castle, but that simply isn't the case anymore, and I still believe Castle is stuck in year one. Back in year one, the melee was necessary because you just didn't have many options to deal with him, and so without the melee counter, the attackers have to acknowledge when Castle is being picked and bring counters or utility to help the push. Now, that is just my feelings on Castle, but I am curious to know how you guys would rework him, so let us know down below. Next up, we can discuss the recent leak for Year 5 Season 1 and the operators that have been detailed. So, from some trusted sources on the internet, we learn about Oryx and Yana. We still don't know their CTUs and where they're from, but we do know a bit about their gadgets and weaponry. Oryx is the defender, supposedly able to breach through soft walls with his body and in some way, and yes, we're talking Mr. X style, like literally barreling through walls, and then Yana is the attacker, able to throw out some kind of controllable hologram. Oryx will have access to the MP5 without the ACOG, the Spaz-12 shotgun from Valkyrie, the Bailiff pistol of the Italian Ops, and the USG. Yana will have Nomad's ARX with an available vertical grip, the G36C from Ash, and the Canadian secondary pistol, the MK1. So Oryx is the operator I'm more intrigued about here, and it's because of the human an impact nade element we've got here. The reason I like this so much is because impacts are actually a two-step process. If you're on the move or trying to get away from an attacker on a roam, to use an impact, you've got to first take out the nade and then secondly, throw it out a wall and run through. With Oryx's ability, you'll then be able to skip the first step of pulling out the nade and you could just barrel on through the wall and easily transition from room to room. Of course, we can't be sure of exactly how this thing works and there is also the question of if it can be used on hatches, but if this this is 
even roughly the ability, this could be a big deal to the Rome game on defense. The other half of roaming is escaping, if possible, and I think in certain situations, this will be a useful take on it. Now, given he doesn't have access to an ACOG with his MP5, I actually don't think this defender will be a three armor. Based on this small tease, I think this is a roaming two speed, two armor operator, and he'll be more of an aggressive style roamer than what we're used to. The leak specifically says it acts like the smashers from Outbreak, and how they would smash through walls was equal to a massive explosion. So I think this guy is going to be pretty hardcore. If you guys are looking for a direct comparison, I'd relate Oryx to the defensive version of Sledge, focusing on soft breaching for the defenders. Now, the community have been comparing Yana to an attacking version of Alibi, and I can definitely see the utility. Before you head into the map, throw out this controllable hologram, and just like Alibi, any defender that shoots at it or somehow walks through it gets pinged, and the attackers are notified of the exact location for a few seconds. Now, obviously, when the devs utilize attacking abilities on defense or defensive abilities on attack, they change it up a bit, and so given attackers are usually on the move, I understand why this hologram would need to be controllable and alibis are not. Now, the community have been begging for some kind of audio gadget that makes sounds like footsteps to throw an enemy off guard. I mean, sound is probably the most important element of this game. It's just so core to the experience. It's pretty easy to see how a gadget like this could be effective, and so it's possible Yana introduces this as part of her hologram gadget. Now, my full theory, and early apologies if this sounds a bit far-fetched, but fully, I think Yana will have a drone that she can press a button to deploy a hologram with, and also another button to make sounds with, like footsteps. I just can't see much use of a hologram for the attackers that doesn't make sound because the defenders are so reliant on sound to help them navigate their flanks through the map and get the upper hand. If a defender doesn't hear a window break or just comes across a completely still attacker, it'll just be too obvious that it's a hologram in most cases. I think it works for Alibi because the attackers are the ones pushing the site and they don't always know what to expect when they finally get there. So there are a lot of ways that this can be spun, but I think the roaming meta is at an all-time high at this moment in the game, and because of the very high ban rates of Jackal, there's really no answer for it. I could see Yana as an operator that forces the defenders into exposing themselves or just giving the attackers more intel on the defenders' whereabouts. Now, finally, for their weapons, I think Yana is looking solid with the G36C as her primary and also the ARX with a vertical grip, which should make the weapon a little bit more controllable. But Oryx is looking kind of weak. Now, of course, the MP5 is an amazing submachine gun. Any Doc or Rook main knows this, but without the ACOG, it takes a major perk of the weapon away. The MP5 isn't the Alda. It doesn't have a gigantic magazine to compensate, and after a few damage nerfs, honestly, it doesn't hit as hard either. I haven't come across a Doc or Rook main that uses the holographic on that weapon over the ACOG. I've just never really seen it, and so Oryx may feel weak as a result. In reality, though, if his gadget is this aggressive, he may be our next shotgun main operator with the Spaz-12 because it is an amazing shotgun and his close-up and personal aggression could synergize well. Now, of course, this is all a leak and so take everything with a grain of salt, but what do you think? Are these abilities anything special? Are these operators sounding exciting to kick off year five or does it all sound like internet fluff? Let us know in a comment below. Finally, guys, I want to touch on another bit, this time about Tachanka. It's been leaked that his reworked is in fact taking place this year and that it will make his primary weapon his LMG and also some kind of incendiary thing. Thing. Now, incendiary thing is just too vague to really do anything with, but hopefully Tachanka will now be mobile, which is absolutely huge for this operator. Again, this is an operator clearly still stuck in year one in his current state, and now that we're coming up on five years in and Siege understands its identity better, Tachanka needs to move, and hopefully now he's able to. Also, map bins are a brand new feature that are potentially coming, and I suppose this means lobbies will be offered a few maps at the start of the match and then pick with which ones to ban. Or it could be that the community take place in a game-wide vote to ban a map for a week. Either way, I do like this addition because if the community are aware of a map that's bugged or problematic, then they can ban it, and when it comes up or before it's disabled by the devs, they can avoid the issue. Now, for myself, and I'm guessing many of you, I don't want to see one map constantly banned to the point of never seeing it in the match, kind of similar to Jackal. I like these ban systems, but only really when they're tactical and shake things up. Once the community settles in, and the same maps are banned over and over, I think is when these features become limiting, and so I'm hoping to avoid that here.
Lastly, replays could be coming, which I basically sum up to theater mode. We already have like after death replays and stuff like that, but a whole match replay would be amazing, especially for us content creators and other people in the space. All in all guys, the start of year five is looking interesting. Phantom Sight was the last time we really saw an attacker style gadget on defense and vice versa. And I'm kind of getting that similar vibe here with this one. Now there are more leaks, but this video is running long and I've got a lot to say about them. So look out for a brand new video very, very soon here. But that's everything, guys. That's the build up to the massive year five reveal in Montreal, Canada, and most everything worth discussing for you. Now, I want to hear from you guys. Are you Team Oryx or Yana Squad? And is a mobile Tachanka exactly what he needed, or is there something else? Leave it all in a comment down below. If you guys did enjoy this video, please drop a like and subscribe with notifications if you're new. With that being said, it's been Zen. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm out.